I'm a weird looking guy. <laughs> I, I realized that recently. I was walking by someone on the phone. They were talking on the phone. And right as I walked by this guy, he just goes, man, there are some goofy motherfuckers out tonight. <laughs> I was the only person on the street. <laughs> I was like, okay, I just found out I'm goofy. And also plural, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I keep having this thing happen where I walk into a room of people and everyone looks like all put together, you know? And they look like nice and they look like they aren't worried about anything. And uh, I forgot to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a vibe, my vibe is that I just seem like I have crumbs on my shirt. <laughs> in any situation, it's like, that guy's got crumbs, <laughs> you know? I say that because recently I walked into a party and the guy said, I think you got crumbs on your shirt. <laughs> I said, what the hell? <laughs> Cause I knew I didn't have crumbs on my shirt. I hadn't even eaten before the party, it was Ramadan. <laughs> and, uh, so I go, look man, there's no crumbs on my shirt, okay? And he goes, oh, you know what it probably is? Uh, you probably have beard dandruff. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> See, I was worried I looked like a slob. <laughs> Thankfully, it's only beard dandruff. <laughs> the most disgusting combination of words I can imagine. <laughs> it's good it's just that. <laughs> My least favorite thing in the world is uh, when someone tells me they saw someone that looked like me. Because it's never a hunk, you know? <laughs> it's never, I, I had that happen recently. Uh, a guy I hadn't seen in years texted me. He said, Tommy, I saw this guy that looked exactly like you on the train. I was like, oh, here it goes. He goes, he goes I even took a picture of him. He sends me the picture. It was a picture of me. 100% true. It's me looking at my phone. <laughs> Have you ever realized that you're the poor man's version of yourself? I was like, oh, I'm the weird rando that looks like me now. <laughs> That's the level I've gotten to. Uh, I was on a plane recently. I had to go on one of the small planes. I don't know if you've ever been on one of those. The ones where you think you're gonna die the whole time. You know? <laughs> you're just like any gust of wind and we're fucked, you know? <laughs> I was on one of those planes and I was sitting in the back with all the other CEOs. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the flight attendant comes back and she says something I've never heard before. She goes, hey, so there's a weight imbalance on the plane? So in order to take off, someone from the back needs to move to the middle. And then she just turned and looked directly at me. <laughs> I was like, oh, interesting. Who you chose for this assignment. It's like, when did my life become a yo mama so fat joke? <laughs> hey, we're gonna want this plane to take off. He's on the left, everyone else on the right. <laughs> I moved up, I'm a good passenger, you know, I'm a good citizen, so I moved up. And later, she's giving me my uh, extra calorie soda. <laughs> and I, uh, I ask her, hey, can I ask you something? Did you ask me to move for the weight balance thing? Because I'm overweight. And she said, oh my God, sir, I'm so sorry you thought that. I asked you to move, because you were the only one who was alone. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> so it's sad for a different reason? <laughs> I gained a lot of weight last year. Thank you guys. No need to clap. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I hit like a rock bottom with weight gain. Here's what happened. I was, uh, there was one day I was trying to get into my apartment, which I do like all the time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I reached for my keys and I realized that my keys were not in my front pocket, they were in my back pocket. And I pulled out my key and it was warped. It was bent, just from me sitting on it. It looked like the spoon in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and I put it into the door, and I could not get into my house. <laughs> Have you ever gained so much weight you got evicted? <laughs> I just eat junk, you know? I, I go to this bar all the time that has free hot dogs. So it's kind of <laughs> 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 thing. One day I got back from there and my girlfriend, she was like, uh, oh, how was, how was the bar? And I was like, it was amazing. I had five hot dogs. <laughs> and she just looked at me and sincerely goes, was there a contest? <laughs> It's not good when you tell someone your lunch and they're like, you must have gotten a prize <laughs> for that. <laughs> you got a t-shirt out of that, right? <laughs> and I, I don't know how to cook. That's the problem. I'm a terrible cook. Like, if there's an apocalypse, I'm going to last as long as the microwaves. You know? <laughs> like my microwave broke at one point last year. I put a lean cuisine in the oven. <laughs> Do you know how long it takes? to cook a lean cuisine in a conventional oven. It takes 45 fucking minutes. 45 minutes for some Hunan beef. It's a lot of time to think about the choices that led you to that exact moment. I don't want to lose weight, though. I think I'm over that whole game, you know? Here's my new plan. I've got a new plan. You know when you're watching a TV show and one of the actresses is pregnant but her character isn't pregnant? So they have to like come up with ways to hide her stomach in every shot? I just want to do that in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time you see me, like I'm at a party and it's like, hey, why is Tommy holding those giant grocery bags? <laughs> She's like, don't worry about it, brother. <laughs> You see me on the beach, you're like, Tommy's been folding that towel for an hour. <laughs> I'm just basking the sun, man. Don't worry about me. You know? I've, been, uh, I've been getting a lot of targeted ads from Instagram that are hurting my feelings. Uh, I got one recently. It was four words, and these were the four words. It just said, double chin research study. <laughs> That's what the algorithm decided I needed to be a part of. <laughs> it's like, at what point does this switch from targeted advertisements to straight up cyber bullying? <laughs> <laughs> and why do you have to look good? You know, I'm sick of all that shit. I mean, whatever happened to just looking like shit? <laughs> you know, whatever happened?
I had to take a, uh, I had to take a 19 hour train recently. <laughs> 19 hour train across the country. And friends kept asking me, like, oh, why are you taking the train? Why aren't you flying? Because if there'd be any reason that wasn't financial. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm going for a European thing. <laughs> That's I'm gonna wear a beret, I'll do the whole thing, you know? I was like, 19 hours, if it's that long, I better get to solve a murder. <laughs> I was telling my friend about that, and she said, oh, you know, there actually is a serial killer on the Amtrak. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's good to know. She said, there's this guy that for years, he goes around the Amtrak murdering twinks. I was like, I'll be all right. <laughs> like, I'll try and look out for him, but I'm not in the target demo, <laughs> you know? I was on this train, and I was by myself for a while, and then this big group of Amish people got on, and one of the Amish guys asked if he could sit next to me. And I was so excited. I said, of course, because I knew I'd still get to use both the outlets. <laughs> but, you know, we talked about our, the differences in our cultures. He talked about his farm. I talked about my PS4. You know, we bonded. <laughs> then he left, and I was very sad. And this new guy gets on, and he's from the modern world. And uh, <laughs> this new guy sitting next to me starts playing songs from his phone with no headphones. I was like, man, bring back the Amish, too. <laughs> Where's Jebediah? <laughs> I don't like these modern people. You know? I got into a friend's car recently. This is a true story. And I got into my friend's car, and his phone connected to the Bluetooth in the car stereo. And it started playing the audio from a porn video. <laughs> like we get in the car, he turns it on, and it's just a woman moaning. And uh, he gets very flustered. And he just turns to me and goes, I wasn't even watching porn. <laughs> I was like, well, that's way weirder. <laughs> Were you listening to it? <laughs> For me, it's always been a visual medium. <laughs> but he's bright red, you know, he's very embarrassed, and he just, he just smacks the FM button on the radio. And it starts playing an Imagine Dragon song. <laughs> I was like, man, just put the porn back on. <laughs> We're adults, you know, we can handle it. I love being back out in the world, uh, you know, I, I, after everything. I, 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 my, my favorite thing is being drunk in an Uber. That's my favorite shit in the world. <laughs> just like in the car, looking at my phone, I can't even read the words on the screen. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, Instagram's crazy tonight. <laughs> I'm looking at Twitter, you know? <laughs> just hammered in the car, and like the passengers don't even notice. Like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm unemployed, you're safe. There was a, a period last year where I had to go on unemployment for a few months, and unemployment is the most honest paycheck I've gotten in my entire life. <laughs> so every time I get a paycheck, it'd be for some office job, and it'd be like, Tommy McNamara, office assistant. I said, that's not me, you know? It's not my thing. When I was on unemployment, I get a paycheck that just said, Tommy McNamara, unemployed. I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that's right on the money. The way I got myself through it is I would just convince myself that the state was paying for whatever I did that day. Like if I just like played basketball at the park, I'd be like, yeah, I'm kind of a government athlete. <laughs> My thing. They love what I do out there, you know? <laughs> if I just went to the movies, I'd be like, yeah, I'm kind of a government patron of the arts. You know? <laughs> If I did absolutely nothing, I'd be like, yeah, I'm kind of a state politician. Whoa! <laughs> Didn't think I'd go there, did ya? <laughs> I'm talking about the issues tonight. <laughs> a lot of issues, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Just think of the issues, you know? Politics, the climate, women harassing me, asking me to send them nude pictures. <laughs> 
This is the stuff that affects us, you know? I don't want to send you a nude. I don't want to send you a nude. I don't want to send you a nude. You're gonna have to zoom in. I don't want to do that. I don't want to read your response. I don't want to read your response. I don't want to read your response. You're gonna say, LOL, where's the rest of it? Ah. you to share it with your friends I don't want you to share it with your friends I don't want you to share it with your friends they're gonna roast my ass it's a big ass yeah oh. I don't want you to <laughs> I don't want you to share it online. I don't want you to share it online. I don't want you to share it online. Cause it's gonna go viral. I got a weird body. I drank too much last year, and the 15 years before it. <laughs> I had a weird point with drinking at home, uh, where here's what happened. I went to the gas station near my house one day to buy ice cream, and I brought the ice cream up to the counter, and the guy just said, oh, no beer today. <laughs> well, that's a bad sign. <laughs> you don't want to be a regular at the shell. I was walking past the gas pumps like, well, this is my cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a friend about it, and my friend was like, yeah, man, I've been drinking way too much. I've been drinking three nights a week. <laughs> like, three nights a week? You haven't even started drinking. <laughs> Every week feels like a month. So I've been drinking 25 nights a week. <laughs> They're really pitching non-alcoholic beer lately. I think it's a good product. I think it's weird the way they advertise it. They advertise non-alcoholic beer like they didn't invent soda and seltzer before it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's this billboard I see for non-alcoholic beer and it says, uh, it says alcohol-free lunch, active afternoon, now you can. <laughs> it's like, well, you could before. <laughs> There was a way to not drink at lunch. It's been around for so long. <laughs> There's this commercial for, for Heineken Zero that I see a lot where it, it's this guy and he's in a shirt and tie, he's in an office. He's like walking through the office and uh, he's got a Heineken can. Everyone who walks by is gasping, they're like, <gasps> you know? And he uh, flips the can. It's Heineken Zero. <laughs> and everyone just goes, oh. Like that's normal? <laughs> That's the most insane thing you could possibly do, <laughs> is to bring a non-alcoholic beer to work? <laughs> Are you out of your mind? <laughs> if I saw that, I'd call HR. <laughs> I'd be like, something is wrong with this guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been going out a lot lately. I think I, I, think I lost some social skills the last couple of years. Uh, I realized that recently, I was at a karaoke bar, 
And uh, I love karaoke, and my friend comes up to me, and he goes, hey, Tommy, are you going to do a song? And I said the weirdest shit I've said in my entire life <laughs> back to him. I said, no, I've lost the urge to sing. <laughs> I've lost the urge to sing. The most dramatic thing anyone has ever said. <laughs> like I was an opera singer whose wife died. <laughs> not a guy who was gonna do Complicated by Avril Lafitte. <laughs> like it does not matter if you sing or don't. Truly nobody cares. I got turned away from a bar recently for, uh, for being too drunk. It's weird they can do that. <laughs> Like, would you turn a guy away from a bookstore if he read too much that day? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> I've been getting turned away from bars my whole life. <laughs> it's kind of a running theme in my story. <laughs> like, I, turned away, uh, I got turned away from a bar. Like, when I was 16, it was like, you can't come into this bar. You have braces. Like, all right, whatever. <laughs> in college, I was kind of like a big party guy. They'd be like, you can't come into this bar. You don't have a shirt on. They go, it's one of those dress code bars. <laughs> the best one I ever got, this is a 100% true story. I walked up to a bar once, and the guy goes, hey, I can't let you in here. You're soaking wet, <laughs> and it's not raining. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good call. I should go home. <laughs> That's the right move at this point. <laughs> Won't explain why, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my biggest drinking was in college. Uh, and in college, this is a true story. I went at, and saw a Boston based white rapper one night. I think those are the worst four words you could use to describe a human. <laughs> I saw a Boston based white rapper. <laughs> and I didn't know any of his songs, so I was in the front row. And uh, he was at my college, I was like, I'm gonna have a good time, you know? I'm in the front row, I am uh, hammered drunk. And all of a sudden, uh, from the stage, he starts pouring some liquor out. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm drunk, I like drinking. So what I do, this is a smart move, uh, what I do is I get under the liquor that he's pouring out, and I start jugging it. <laughs> you know, I was like, ah! <laughs> and then, everyone stares at me. Like the music stops. Everyone is just looking right at me. And I found out later that he had just said, I'm gonna pour some out for my friend who died. <laughs> so he was like, I'm having this emotional moment. My friend died and I was just like, ah! Like Hennessy, <laughs> what's he gonna do with it? You know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have people try and have like real conversations with me when I'm at that point of being drunk, and it's just like I, you can't just to say it, but I just want to be like, look, I am too drunk to talk to you. <laughs> you need to stop talking. <laughs> so I'm too drunk to talk to you.
fell into a bonfire. <laughs> that was something I did. I, I fell into a bonfire at a wedding. And uh, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I was at this wedding. It was a lake wedding. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a lake wedding. It's like a destination wedding where the destination's a lake. <laughs> I was there with all my friends, an amazing time, one of the best weddings I've ever been to. It was so much fun. And at the end of the night, they planned two activities uh, for the younger people. One of them, you could probably guess, was a bonfire. <laughs> and the other one was something called silent disco. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of silent disco. Yeah, some people, have, okay, basically what happens in a silent disco is everyone has headphones on, and they all play the same song at the same time. And you have a dance party just to the music in the headphones. There's no music out loud, it's all in the headphones. It's like a great party where you're constantly reminded you're alone. <laughs> and I was there, and I was way too drunk to be at any type of disco, you know? <laughs> and I'm doing my classic dance moves. You guys have seen them, you know? <laughs> I'm doing my dance moves, and uh, all of a sudden, I trip, and I fall backwards. And I fall directly into the fire. <laughs> and I start to scream because I'm on fire. <laughs> and the thing about screaming at a silent disco, <laughs> nobody hears you. <laughs> so there's like a good 45 seconds where I'm in there just smoldering. <laughs> and I'm just like, ah! Because <laughs> I'm on fire. And, uh, <laughs> Everyone else is having a good old time, yeah. <laughs> Finally, one of my friends spots me, and he points at me from like 30 yards away. He just points at me, he goes, Tommy, roll! You gotta roll! <laughs> you know, like stop, drop, and roll. That's a phrase I never thought would apply to me. <laughs> I think I heard it my whole life. I was like, I'm never gonna do that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at a certain point, you've stopped and dropped, and you just have to roll. Uh, <laughs> So I start, I start the role, you know, I start the process. <laughs> and uh, he sprints over, and he pulls me up out of the fire. And he tells me the next day, he goes, Tommy, I knew you were gonna be okay because of what you said to me when I pulled you out of that fire. I said, man, I don't even remember. What did I say to you? He goes, well, you looked me in the eyes, and you said, I'm Denzel Washington. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, then you just said, man on fire. <laughs> he goes, then you laughed at your own joke. <laughs> and then you ran into the lake. <laughs> the next day, all my friends are coming up to me, and uh, you know, they're being so annoying, you know? They're just being like, how's your burn wound? Shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> It annoyed me because it's like last, last night, these guys are peer pressuring me. You know, the night before, it's like, let's chug a beer, take that shot, go dance near the fire. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they're doctors, all right? <laughs> because I had this huge burn wound on my back for a while. It was crazy. It looked like kind of a cool tattoo, though. Like if you got a tattoo of a burn wound, uh, <laughs> it would be perfect, yeah? But I went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, you need to go to a burn specialist. And I was just like, how many destinations does this wedding have? <laughs> <laughs> We're at three right now. <laughs> I started having uh, night terrors this year. <laughs> I, did. I started having night terrors. I, I looked it up on WebMD, and apparently it's very common in uh, children three to eight. So... <laughs> Sometimes I just wake up screaming. It's a fun thing in life, you know? And uh, it, it happened for the first time where it was just like three in the morning, I just bolted up in bed, screamed at the top of my lungs, which is scary for me, scarier for the two women in bed with me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's like, what is going on in their minds, you know? And they have a big shoot for Victoria's Secret tomorrow, so <laughs> they need their sleep. Uh, <laughs> But no, so I woke up screaming, and my girlfriend, uh, she woke up, she starts screaming. So we're both just screaming at the top of our lungs. 
and my roommate did nothing. <laughs> he texted me the next day just saying, hey, everything okay with you guys? <laughs> like as if that's how couples fight. <laughs> I know that if I was being murdered, you'd send a text the next day. <laughs> I, had a, I had a breakup last year, and uh, I, I, I realized my friends aren't good at like consoling after breakups, because this is a real thing my friend said to me. I was like, oh, I had this breakup. He puts his arm around me. It's in August, and he just goes, well, football season is right around the corner. <laughs> I was like, that's the dumbest shit in the world. <laughs> and then a couple Sundays later, I'm drinking a beer watching football, and I'm like, by God, he was right. <laughs> this does replace love. <laughs> Girl, I used to uh, vape. She's a big vapor. It's a real problem in these high schools. And, uh, oh, come on, it's a joke. I'm normal. I'm a normal guy. <laughs> I wake up in the morning just like everyone else. I put my shoes on and some socks. I like to go to movies that are popular. And listen to music that rocks I like sports and beer And nothing that is weird I cannot lie I like food and drinks And everybody thinks I'm a normal guy Well, I'm a normal guy That's not what we heard Hey, what the hell? We heard you're a freak That's just not true You weren't in coffee Now you're being rude And sports play with the ball And being shy I like food and clothes And everybody knows I'm a normal guy Well, I'm a normal guy We got some receipts What's on that paper? Your Pornhub surgeon Put that away Don't worry about it I know I got addicted to sports gambling recently. <laughs> if anyone ever messes with that stuff, it'll get ya. I did, I, uh, my friends were worried about me. They, they said, uh, Tommy, I think you have a problem. And I was like, would a guy with a problem have won $300 once? <laughs> Do the math, pal. Doesn't add up. <laughs> And there's no, I've been trying to quit. There's no physical benefit to quitting, which is annoying. You know, you quit drinking, everyone's like, oh, you're losing weight. You quit smoking, it's like your skin looks amazing. You quit gambling, it's like, you look uh, less mad about the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> My friend was trying to convince me, he was like, you know what you should do? Instead of putting your money in sports gambling, put it in the stock market. 
And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> That's just a boring version of the same thing, you know? <laughs> I was like, at least with sports gambling, you get to watch a game. What am I gonna do, get drunk and look at a graph? <laughs> I've been trying to get my life together uh, lately. I've been trying to get my finances in order and all that. I, uh, I had to call the bank recently to check in on my fortune. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to this guy at the bank. This is a true story that's gonna sound like it's fake. I was talking to this guy at the bank and uh, he goes, I have to transfer you to a different department. And I said, okay, cool. And then he transferred me to a phone sex hotline. <laughs> 100% true story. One second I'm talking to the bank, the next thing I hear is just, we are 18, we are wet, and we are ready for you. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't sound like JP Morgan. <laughs> like, he never says stuff like this. <laughs> In all my years of banking. <laughs> so I hung up the phone. And I called the bank back. I get a new guy on the line, and I'm talking to him. I go, hey, so the last guy transferred me to a sex line. And the new guy said, oh, no. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I didn't think it was part of the protocol. <laughs> I didn't think it was in the script. <laughs> He goes, Mr. McNamara, we are going to put you on hold while I investigate. <laughs> I was like, oh, investigate? Okay. I didn't realize the bank had a special victims unit. <laughs> <laughs> but he puts me on hold for like 10 minutes. I finally get back on. And he just goes, Mr. McNamara, we are so sorry. Here's what happened. You were speaking to a disgruntled employee. <laughs> He had just been fired today. He took you as his last call before he left the building. <laughs> I was just like, that guy is a fucking legend. <laughs> That's the coolest move of all time. <laughs> they were like, is there any way we can make it up to you? I was like, I don't know, can I meet him? <laughs> Can I buy the guy a beer? Is that... <laughs> he said no. I was like, all right, just transfer it back to the hotline then. I'll finish this thing off. <laughs> There's so many problems in the world. <laughs> I've noticed lately. But it's so weird. It's like the world it still just feels just like high school. The world. <laughs> like high school It goes by so fast So fast The world It's just like high school You gotta make the good times last You really do This world just like high school We all smile But we're all hurting Whoa. It's just like high school And I'm definitely not a virgin No, I'm definitely not a virgin I said I'm definitely not a bird now. No, 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 no,
It's true, it's true, it's true. at midnight, I want to drink a beer. The clock is ticking down, the ladies look around to find that special guy. She walks over to me, the countdown gets to three, and she looks me in the eye. She says, what do you say? The year's winding away, why don't we seal it with the kiss? I say you're very hot, and I like you a lot, but you must listen to this. I said, I got a resolution for the first moment of the year. I said, I don't want to kiss at midnight. I want to drink a beer. Yeah.